Hey guys, welcome to week eight. And as we start to move out of a theoretical space, more of an abstract space into practical um, use cases, you're gonna note that these videos actually get shorter. They're probably gonna feel a little overwhelming because there's gonna be a lot of um, practical knowledge baked into these things. But of course, we're gonna supplement with documents and assignments that, that give you kind of a, a natural ease into it. But you also see that we start to look at um, shorter content bases as opposed to kind of this broad spread shotgun approach we've been taking um, previous lectures, specifically the first half of the course. I told you the second half of the course after the midterm, we're going to start getting into more fine-tuned nuances and mechanisms within Python, and that's what we're going to do. This week, actually, we're going to look at uh, two topics. You know, it says three here. We're going to briefly define logic. The core of this lecture is to talk about if statements, which is great if you don't know what they mean, because you're going to learn about them in just a moment. And then within that, we're going to talk a little bit about conditional operators. Don't get scared off. Let's jam on this really quickly, and I will try to keep this as short as possible for you. Haha, <laughs> as promised, a very short lecture agenda. Quick definition on logic. We are going to give some practical use cases for if L if and else statements. Let's figure out what that means. All right, first things first. So let's talk about logic. What is logic? I mean, I think everybody has an intuitive understanding of what logic is, but we want to talk about it in terms of the programs that we're building and programming in general. So the definition that you can find from Google logic is great, but ultimately not helpful. What I want you to know and what you'd be assessed on is you should know that logic is the ability to make decisions based on information available or conditions, right? I mean, that's a more simplified, boiled down version of all the stuff you saw above that. I want you to know that we're going to be trying to do decision making based on what we have available at our use um, in variables or whatever the parameters of the, the running program is right now. So that still might be a little loose in your minds for you to grasp, a little ethereal. So let's try and make a quick assessment of this. So let's say you wake up in the morning, you're like, I'm hungry. And you go through a series of logical steps to identify how you're going to solve a solution. In this case, I'm hungry. Am I hungry? That's that's the first question. Yes or no. If I'm not hungry, then hey, I'm not going to eat. If I am hungry, I'm going to be like, all right, cool. Do I have cereal? If I don't have cereal, well, I guess it's a top ramen breakfast. If I do have cereal, well, do I have milk? Okay, great, I got milk. And is it expired? If it's not expired, boom, lucky charms time. If it is expired, we're going back to top ramen. So it's essentially just taking the information or the parameters from which our environment is giving us and being able to make decisions. Those decisions have to follow a set format, set parameters, and therefore they are logical. And we go to the infinitive. It's logic. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so let's go back. This was week seven. We were talking about comparison operators. If you don't remember, it's these guys, right? We know that we want to do comparisons between values within our programs. And these are the symbols in which we use to do those comparisons, right? If you use a single equal uh, sign, you're assigning a value. So we use double equals to do a comparison if two items or two values are equal. There's the bang operator, which is an exclamation point. If we put that first. That's like saying not equal, you know, obviously greater than, less than, all these, uh, these mathematical symbols that you're used to. So we are going to use these comparison operators to perform logical checks. And as you may remember, a comparison operator, when looking at two items, is going to return a Boolean value, right? Either a true or false. So that's going to help us get through those processes. And I will throw together a quick video showing you practical application of what a comparison between values looks like. Let's check that out now. Okay, so you'll see me zoom in through all the different comparison operators. And this should be review for you. But if it's not, you can see me going through each one. I hope this helps.
Okay, so here we go. We've got our concepts together. We've got our context, right? We're trying to make logical decisions, and those decisions are in the form of, is something available? Is something true? If that's the case, then we can make a sound decision. And that's where we get into exactly that, what's called an if statement, something that you're going to find in every programming language. It's the basic way from which we can perform a conditional operation, an operation that's dependent on a condition, right? There's multiple ways to do conditional operations, but most frequently they'll be found in the form of an if statement. So we got a new keyword for a toolbox. We have if, right? And that is a, if you try to assign a variable to it, you wouldn't be able to. It's because that is a taken system word. It's a keyword in the Python programming language. But now we get to use it instead of avoid it. So let's take a look at the statement below, right? I should say the statements below. First we have a, and we're assigning it at the value of five. We have B, we're assigning it the value of three. And then the next statement is where the magic happens. We're gonna use that keyword for the first time. We're gonna say, if A is greater than B, and then we're gonna put our colon there, and then underneath that is a statement. So it's another reason why Python just excels at being elegantly simplistic. Right? It's literally telling us exactly how we would rationally think about this. If this is this, then do something. And that's exactly what an if statement is. It starts with the if keyword, the condition, right? These are the parameters for which we can evaluate whether a decision making process is going to return true or false. And we use the colon to start an indention sweep, just like you know, you'll see with functions and other items in uh, in Python. And then if that if that condition is true, if those parameters return true, whatever happens in the indention or whatever appears in the indention is what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna run. So in this scenario we're gonna say if A is greater than B, then print to standard output. If you see this, the statement is conditionally true. That's exactly right. That's what happened. A is indeed greater than B. So that evaluation returns a Boolean true. If a Boolean true is returned from this statement, from this line, it will immediately drop down to the indention clause and perform whatever actions we have listed there. If it's not true, then it will go on into the next point in the program where the indention has returned to like the root state, the, the far left state. So I hope that helps to illustrate that logic in Python's not that scary. And even the syntax is pretty simplified. Again, we're gonna support this with some assignments, but I hope you at least feel like, okay, I could get this, even if you don't remember, um, you know, verbatim the syntax, if you saw it, you can figure out what's going on. So we've got a couple of other tools that we're gonna throw in our toolbox, and these are all based off this if concept, right? This conditional, um, this conditional, you know, evaluation. And we have another keyword that we can use, and it's elif, right? And this is a way that we can chain additional checks, additional conditional checks um, within uh, to evaluate a couple of values. And elif is actually short for else if. Again, Python does us the uh, insane justice of making things syntactically, you know, apparent of what it's trying to do, what it's trying to say. And essentially, it does exactly what it sounds like. It gives another evaluation point for your condition. So let's walk through this together, and I hope this makes sense. So we already know if, right? And this time we're going to use if C is less than D, then print the statement C is less than D is true. Okay, well let's just assume that C is not less than D. Let's just say um, C is equal to D. How about that? And we come down and we have re re returned to this root indention, right? Because the indention block is where things that 
where return true would happen. This is not the case. C is less than D. In this scenario, that would be false. So we come back to the first line where we're out of our indention. And we're saying, all right, L if or else, if C is greater than or equal to D, print C is greater than or equal to D. Well, if it's not less than uh, D, then it's got to be either greater than or equal to. So presumably that's true. And of course, the response is C is greater than or equal to D. All right. So ELIF gives us another checkpoint, another way to evaluate a condition on values that we have. But it doesn't stop there. We've got one more tool for a toolbox, and then I will bid you adieu for this video, and we'll work on something else in the next video. And that one last tool that we can use in these conditional evaluations is the ELF. I said the ELF, excuse me, is the ELSE. It might seem confusing, right? Because we have ELF, why would we use ELSE, or why would we not use ELSE in general? If we're saying, if this, then or else this that seems logical but else has a very particular use case and this is what I want I want you to take home we use else and we consider it as an opportunity to catch anything that's uncaught anything that slipped through any of the chains of else if statements that we have because you can do multiple if none of those cases happens to be uh, return true. Else is our last chance. We're going to grab it and we're going to do something. So it's got a very similar implementation, but it's just kind of like the last chance. It's our, it's our last chance to, uh, to pass go and collect $200. So in the scenario below, let's look at this line by line. And I hope you can start to appreciate how the syntax leads you through the language. So we're saying, If C is less than D, print the statement C is less than D. Okay, well, if that's not true, else if C is greater than D, print C is greater than or equal to D. Let's just say it should be, it should be um, equal to, or excuse me, greater than. But, so let's say in this scenario, C is equal to five and D is equal to five. Is C less than D? Well, no, not technically. C is equal to D, so that's not true. And this else if statement, this elif statement, it's saying, is C greater than D? Well, still not true. Five is not greater than five. It's not less than five. It is five. But let's say we don't have the wherewithal to put is C equal to D. We can just say else. Say, all right, this condition that I first gave you was not met didn't, didn't uh, return or evaluate as true, fine. I tried something else, didn't work, fine. I tried something else. You can do as many of these chains as you want to. And then at the end you say, I give up. Else, do this. And that's an important programmatic uh, mechanism to use because you're gonna wanna try to catch any input that you can um, that your users may have in your programs or that you you might be trying to process within your programs but sometimes you can't catch it all and you have to have a safeguard and you can consider safe or excuse me you can consider else as that keyword safeguard i gave it a shot here i tried again i tried again if you've gotten to this point in the program all right fine, this is how you should handle it. This is the default for anything that doesn't meet the above mentioned criteria. And that's pretty much the way else is. Consider this in closing. If is when you want to look at evaluating conditions and it's going to either return true or false. And if it's true, you write the statement. If you want to look for multiple conditions, then you can of course do elif else if. If this didn't work, then try this. Else if, we'll try this. And you can do that multiple times. And then finally, as a last caveat, we can use else. All right, we tried a bunch of things and obviously it didn't work because we got this far down our program stack. Else, all right, handle it this way. 
I hope that made sense to you. Try to keep the video discreet and quick, um, but also be, you know, have some information in there. You'll see that the assignments that are posted for the week will put you through the paces. And I think you'll, if you didn't get it just from this video, going through and manually applying the techniques will definitely help. In our next video, uh, when I tack on to talking about loops, uh, I want to come back to if statements. I'm going to let this simmer for a little bit, and we're going to talk about shorthand notation, how to do everything in a single line. Um, it's not my preferred way because it's not as elegant. It's a little harder to read. Obviously, when you look at this, you're like, oh, if this, else then, else then, or just else. When it's all in one line, it's a little more difficult to read, but it's a way to save line space. And then um, we'll also talk about what's called ternary, ternary operators or conditional expressions. Um, it's a single line with uh, multiple conditions, uh, if else with multiple conditions. So we'll talk about those more in detail in the next video, but I'd like you to first watch through this, maybe watch through it a couple times if you don't get it. Attempt some of the assignments, get some uh, get some reps in, you know, hands on the keyboard, and then we'll see how we can improve our efficiency with some of these single line and ternary uh, operators in the future. All right, I hope you found this helpful, and I know you're going to kick butt in the next quiz. And give me a, shoot me an email or send me a text if you have any questions. All right, I'm out.